For more of Good Children, don't forget to subscribe to our Patreon. It is $7 a month. You are getting one extra episode per week every single Friday. We'll see you there. We'll see you there. It, it knows what it's doing. See, it's doing it by itself. You can't make this shit up. <laughs> it's so freaking loud. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Ding. That tastes like sunscreen in a glass. That's kind of delicious. All these people are going to try to tell you to make it from scratch. When you can just buy a bottle, you think it's bad. <laughs> Do you think it's good? I think it could potentially be rancid. There is an aftertaste that's unlike any other. I think we just drink it. Good chill. Wait. Good chill. Good chill. Good chill. Good chill. Good chill. <laughs> hey guys, and welcome back to a brand new episode of Good Children, the podcast for hosts Joe Hedges and Andrew Muscarella reflect on our 22 years of friendship. Growing up in the late 2000s, early 2010s, and all of the nostalgia, trauma, and bachelor parties that go along with it. Hmm. So, like, what's been new for you? Nothing really much has been new for me. Like, I'm just, like, lingering, I'm loving, and I'm lusting. Amazing. What are we talking about today? Today we're talking about bachelor parties, but actually, we're just talking about our New Orleans trip um, for a bachelor party that ended up a lot gayer than we were expecting. I think it was gayer than... We were expecting, then my brother-in-law was expecting, mm -hmm. then my cousin was expecting. Because when you have your hands in planning anything, I guess it's going to be gay. I'm kind of becoming a gay icon. Like, I'm kind of finally accepting the fact that I'm, like, leaning into the gay... Like, I was thinking about this. Um, <laughs> yeah. I remember, like, a year ago, we had the conversation about girls' gays versus gays' gays, and we were like, we're girls' gays. And, like, I still am obviously always a girl's girl, but I was like, I think I'm becoming a gay's gay. Yeah. Which is crazy. I think that's normal. I think that, like, this is a normal progression. Yeah, it you is. You know what I mean? It's like you start with the girls when you're growing up, and then once you actually start becoming comfortable being gay, you meet the gays, and then, like, you in your 30s gays gay yeah but i think there's like a fine line like i feel like people boomerang like you start all girls and then you're like no i need to be on just gay people and then you're like well i actually like can just be a i don't need to let live my life in reaction to how people see me yes and i think that's kind of what's happening where i'm like i thought i was gonna have to have this point in my life where i was like fire island with the twinks like full gay 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 and if i didn't have that i'd be upset mm. and now i'm like i can do fire island with the gays and the girls like i you know and, like, i can enjoy the gays the girls and the queens you're one with the queens like drag queens yeah, yeah. the gays the girls the fays and the queens yeah. yes like that's i think it's just about like entering queer spaces instead of like strictly gay spaces and i don't I truly don't go into straight spaces anymore yeah. voluntarily. I think this is probably how RuPaul started. Could I say what you said to me? <laughs> what did I say? Joe literally before this air, uh, before we were recording was like, honestly, like all I want is to be the next RuPaul. And I don't even mean. Which you're at home listening and saying, there's a lot off for you there's to be the next. There's some differences. There's some differences between you and RuPaul, RuPaul but Charles. I get what you mean. I don't want to be a like a popular drag queen i want the level of like i don't give a fuck attitude that rue has like there's something about the fact that like she can frack mm -hmm. and still have a show and like n nobody really cares you can be a frack not a hack you know what i yeah, mean yeah and that sounds like lyrics to her song <laughs> wait that's her next song frack don't hack, hack. <laughs> and then she's on stage moving two feet i'm sorry i think we should do shots I do shots because I'm you. gonna struggle to drink this thing. Are we gonna really see? I'm sipping this like it's a milkshake. Okay, I'll sip. I'll sip more. I'll do a shot with you. I want to start with a shot out of the cap of the Malibu bottle. Okay, I was gonna say, are you gonna swig from the bottle? It's getting dark. Oh, I'll swig. But this is like a family bottle. 
I guess we should get into the actual meat of the episode. Okay, so we're going to get into the meat of the episode as Joe is taking a shot of rum, and then I will do my shot. So it's 2019. It's 2019. Joe's... What are you up to? Oh, I'm working at EF Education And you're living, laughing, and loving it up. And I have no conference rooms in my building and i'm making that known to every single person are you saying the malibu is bad no i'm saying that's like it's like candy we i kind of miss being a little bit drunk when we talk oh patreon we're gonna be fucked up today patreon and i'm gonna be hungover in the middle of the day (laughs) well i think we need to get started and before we get into the new orleans talk like i can't believe that i spent most of my life saying it was new orleans I think that's fair. You think, I think is some that people a, say that. Is that, a, is that a thing in, like, the East Coast? I don't know. It's, like, New Orleans, Caramel, but Caribbean. There's a difference between Caramel and New Orleans for me because no one's living in Caramel. New Orleans, for me, is a city that I was obsessed with ever since one, two, three. American, American Horror, Horror Story. Story. The moment that I saw that, I was like, I need to move here. I need to be here. I am addicted to this city. It was one of those things. It was honestly similar to, like, Broad City in New York. Yes. Where I was like, I get what this city's about, and I must be here. And you absolutely, like... Following your trip, your first trip to New Orleans, <laughs> when you were just posting content people, at the houses. People texted me and said, are you okay? I remember that. Shut so up. I was posting so much. I was so, I was posting in a crazy way. You were you were posting like you had 150,000 followers. Always. I always have been. But that, it's similar to what you've said to me when we're going on stage perform for radio city perform yeah. for madison square garden you've always I've been, been performing, performing for, for madison square garden since i was born on really. your instagram um, stories <laughs> no but yeah i remember when i first went to new orleans i immediately had to i bought like i'm in my tightest skinniest skinny jeans mm. asos i'm wearing a silk shirt like almost a blouse asos Ooh. i'm wearing a bolo tie amazon i'm wearing how uh, old are you here i'm Working at BuzzFeed. So I'm 21. Okay. Honestly, boots like that. No, I had on sneakers and I had to Photoshop the boots onto them. Oh, was it like a Balenciaga? No, it was like a van. And I was like, this does not match the vibe. Wide brimmed hat, sunglasses. Of course. And I remember I've always just made my parents like go out extremely out of their way for me to take an Instagram, like on every vacation. Like, you know, and I think I've talked about it on the podcast when I saw the Hunger Games set. When I went to the, the the abandoned mining town in like North Carolina where they filmed The Hunger Games. I don't think you've talked about this, Joe. Does everyone know about the time where I went to the abandoned mining town in North Carolina <laughs> where they filmed The Hunger Games? I'm the wrong person to ask, but I really don't remember this conversation. Yeah, it was on a road trip down south. And I was like, if we just drove three hours out of the way. Of course. We would be there. And I was like, and when will I get this opportunity again? Like, we're, we're, we're not close, but mm-hmm. like... It's the least they could do. It's the closest I'll ever be to District 12. Yes, correct. And I got to walk through the seam. And it was like peak Hunger Games for me. I got to walk through the seams. I was was in Katniss's house. The houses were left standing. I mean, but at that time, Joe, you were like, you were also like, uh, well, at least in your youth, a Hunger Games creator. Yes. Yeah. No, it was great for Tumblr. I think it was, I almost had already deleted my account at that point. But I feel like any time that you were going down south, like your parents made you stop at like a Harley Davidson museum. Yes, so it's, exactly. it's again, it's the least they can the do is bring you to the Hunger done. Games exhibit. And I got to stand in front of the Malark Bakery. And it was still standing. I don't know if it's still standing. If anyone in North Carolina can let me know. You and the damn loaves. But I, I really am happy that nothing changed from your first trip to your second trip when it came to content capture. Thank God. I, I've always content captured my whole life. And we just went through about... I would say 400 images from this trip that we're about to talk yes. about. Haunting? Haunting, yes. But obviously it's a pretty haunted city. And I love to be haunted. You love to be haunted and you almost love to create haunt. Would you say there are some ghosts left behind in New Orleans from us? I would say there are some ghosts that I'd like to keep in the closet. Are you sure about that? Because you've been talking... The closer of this trip, Andrew has been talking about for days on end how excited he is to share this story. Maybe I'd let a ghost out or two today. Should we? Shall, shall we begin? Shall we begin? Before we begin, 
I'm blackout drunk. Andrew. It's because I'm starving. We haven't eaten. That's what it is. And we're like... And I'm literally like... <laughs> I took two shots of rum. Two shots. I'm vibing. I'm vibing. I'm actually like... I Am I a like, nicer, happier person when I have alcohol in my well, system? Well, I'm worried. I'm very worried. I'm worried, darling. I found myself staring at you and like this. <laughs> I was already squinting and it's been five minutes. Okay. Um, so my sister is getting married to her fiance. Um, his name's Anthony. He grew up in Tennessee. Shockingly, for someone who grew up in Tennessee, has pretty good values as a person. So shockingly, when, well, no, no offense, but like it wasn't, it wasn't like he grew up in like Nashville or something. He grew up in like genuinely like rural, rural Tennessee oh, on a Knoxville? compound around, around, around Knoxville, but like on a family compound in yes. Tennessee, like all odds were stacked against him. And nevertheless, he persisted. So when I was in charge of planning his bachelor party, I feel bad in retrospect, but I only invited Andrew, our friend Frank, gay, and my cousin Robbie, ally, a friend of mine, and that was it. So now there's five people going on the bachelor party, and like, it's not that Anthony doesn't have any friends, but like, Joe decided Anthony didn't have friends. It was more so like... And I think that Anthony guided my hands there. He was like, you don't have to invite my friends. Like, this can just be like an us trip. You know, it was kind of like a bonding trip. Well, I'll say something about a bachelor trip or a bachelorette party. It's like, it is sometimes a lot to ask of people to pay yes. for an actual trip itself. Yeah. So, for those that are committed, the five of us, we decided, sure, it's worth the money. We didn't tell Anthony where he was going or who he was going with. Until the morning of. We're on our way. Andrew's there. Frank's there. Robbie's there. Surprise, we're going to New Orleans. And the look on his face, he was so excited. He was excited. He and was. I was also very excited. I've heard great things about New Orleans. Mm -hmm. and, and it's you a, know, an amazing city. It's an amazing city. Everybody told me before I went there, they were like, you're going to be so drunk. And you're not even good. Like, you're, again, blackout vibes. I was like, I don't, I'm not going to be blackout vibes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we take the flight. The flight goes swimmingly well. We decide to Uber to the hotel, but we get to the hotel and it's Room's not, not ready. ready. Yeah, of course. Which is so like, listen, I understand it, hotels. I understand the room not being ready, but I do think we could have we like I think as a society we can figure out a workaround at this point. Like sometimes I want to check into my hotel room at 10 a.m., even 11:30 a.m. I am waiting at every hotel for hours. hours. And I understand the employees are hard at work. And listen, oh, absolutely. Are, and I I applaud them. Like I really like I'm very thankful for absolutely. them. Absolutely. But it does feel a little bit sick and twisted when they're like Sorry, rooms are not ready until 4 p.m. And I'm like, I'm here. It's 10. And I'm like, 4 p.m.? <laughs> You're like getting changed into a bathing suit in a public bathroom. You're like, okay. You're I ripping through your suitcase because you didn't realize <laughs> that the, the hotel was not going to be ready. So now your bathing suit's at the bottom and now you're pissed. It's always a challenge. But for this trip, we said, let's go to brunch. And we went to Sucre. Sucre. Sucre, which was a recommendation from, from someone. Jill. From Jill. Yeah. And if Jill is recommending something, avoid it at all costs. However, we should have avoided it, but I'm glad that we did it. What a bottomless brunch. But there were plenty of bottoms to be found. So not right now. It's not, it's not the angle right now. Very flattering. Very. Is it? Yeah. There were so many bottoms at that table, and the server got it. The server was like, you boys chose the best weekend possible. It's Pride Weekend. Which is the reveal to my brother-in-law and to my cousin and to the audience that I planned this trip for Pride Weekend in New Orleans. And I have yet to be at, to a Pride event in New York. I don't even think I'm out yet. I'm not. To like your I'm parents. out as bi. Like, yeah, I feel like you had to come out to Anthony on the trip. But did I come out to y I came out to No, you were Yeah, you were like yeah, you were searching for coffee. But I didn't trip. I didn't come out until the end of that year. Yeah, no, yes. This is to, or, this is Whoa. mid twenty nineteen. That's crazy. It's crazy. Man. So that's something else. Like we were watching the videos. There was like a level of oppression to us that I kind of forgot existed. Yeah. Like the video of you telling the story of Robin Bovez 
and you're you om you say pardon my French, but I said you. A girl saw me, she actually stopped me and she said, You're a horrible person. <laughs> and my pardon my French, my initial reaction was and I walked right out of that from the bakery, said thank you to the security guard and then, and you censored fuck. And I was like, we like were like even cautious about that at that yeah. time. Like there was a layer of Because you get it, like for the listeners, you I feel like with Anthony or with your cousin Robbie, it's like there are certain people in life that sometimes you don't feel comfortable cursing in front yes. of. So you're like, Oh, like there's a formality here, I'm gonna censor fuck. Right. Now I'm like, fuck that, fuck this, fuck yes. that in and front it's of anybody. So freeing. Like, it is. It's, maybe it's growing up. Maybe it's getting more comfortable with ourselves. I'm turning 27 tomorrow morning. <gasps> um, Happy birthday. Thank you so much. Of last course. birthday episode was so much more thematic. Why I thought you were going to say last birthday. Last birthday ever. <laughs> oh my God, 27 Club, it's my turn. Yeah. So I think part of it's coming to terms with being gay. Like, we were, like, I was out, but I wasn't really, like, about. Proud. Yeah, I was not proud. I yeah. was not proud at all. And it's interesting to just see, like, that trip, I think, was a defining moment in our queerness mm -hmm. because we were with two straight men. And also, like, there was something about the city itself that was so different than from the cities that we were living. Living I was in Boston. Big, big old B. The big B. And you were living... In Massapequa. In Massapequa, but like still had like the access to New York City. Yeah. But it was but something still, about it's a not southern, the yeah. swampy, gay city. Ugh, I love it. I literally love it. It's a different culture. It's a different culture. So we're at brunch, we're at Sucre, where we're actually I think hanging on for dear life already. Mm. It's like eleven thirty in the morning. Inappropriate because when you're off a flight, first of all, you're getting dehydrated on the flight, right? Yeah. You're like losing yes. whatever. You Why? Get a, that's a good question. Thank you for asking. I, I really <sighs> do. <laughs> I don't really know. And maybe somebody can comment, but I know that my legs swell. And that makes you dehydrated? Well, it just shows that I'm bloating. What does that mean? Bloat? Yeah. Bloat comes from like, well, sometimes it depends. Uh-huh. Because bloat? No, please explain. Because bloat can like come from like elevation, I believe. But also, when you're on a flight, normally they're serving meals, and the meals for you to taste. You're it always at that elevation. saying normally they're serving meals, but like you're only getting a meal on the flight when it's above like I think eight hours. But sometimes it's a salty peanut, sometimes it's a salty pretzel. But if it was a meal, it's a salty meal. Their sodium yeah. is high. They want you to be able to taste that, you know, that good, good. And that's what? what leads to a little bloat in your legs. And for me, my legs swell. So it's like... Andrew, I don't believe one word of what you just said. You're saying the reason people's legs swell on flights is because they have salty meals? <laughs> I mean, sure, I can't contest it. But it's just interesting to me that that might be the case. Sometimes I say things and, like, I believe them. And so, they, yeah, half of the listeners believe you right now. Yeah. I'm sure someone's going to be like, no, Andrew's right. Thank There's you. one person who has been fighting for their lives for now, I guess, months about the fact that you were right. There was a Candyland movie. And they almost like they signed up for Patreon just to say it. Thank so you. So I feel like you need to hear that. I, and I, I hope I, they, they, more than anything, they need to hear that you Do you, you heard remember that. their name? No. And if, if, if you do have a name, please come forward. So, Sucre, we're, we're chugging mimosas. I, do you to like a bottomless brunch? Hate a bottomless brunch. Bottomless brunch. I hate bottomless brunches. Because I'll tell you one thing. I love a bottomless brunch. I know you love a bottomless brunch. Do you want to go to one on Sunday? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> the problem with me at a bottomless brunch is that, <laughs> one, I don't do well with acid. And that's just me personally. Right. Lots of orange juice and me don't mix. Then you have a bubbly Prosecco or a champagne. That, you can take that down like water. So when you're having a mimosa, and especially when it's bottomless, you need to recognize if it's noon, come 3 p.m., game over, finish. You're in a bed. At least that's me. What about you? I think drinking is less depressing when it's happening during daylight hours, which I know seems like the reverse of what should be normal, but I have more fun. I'm in a better mood. And I like, I, I'm someone who enjoys being in bed by 6 p.m. 
Like okay. my favorite memories of my life, I'm not even kidding, are times when I've been in bed by 7 p.m. Like been in bed, like showered and in bed. You don't think like to yourself like, oh, that's a little bit concerning. Like I'm in bed by 7 p.m. No, not when I've like done something. Sucre, we left Sucre. First of all, the meal was fantastic. If you're going to New Orleans. Do you remember the meal? I will say You got that, chicken and waffles? Yeah, of course I got you. I feel like I was getting chicken and waffles at every single restaurant. Or the most disgusting like hangover breakfast. It's like the eggs with the sausage and like a gravy. Yeah. And a biscuit. Yeah. I can't how are you drinking? Did you keep, are you still drinking that? So I'm almost done. But we left Sucre. Yeah, but we will listen to Kiki Palmer's Man in the Mirror from Joyful Noise. It was inspirational. I I felt something that everyone should feel in this table. But now I want to feel it. No, you will. <laughs> and how to go back to the hotel to actually check in. I would say out of 10, I was a 10 on the drunk scale. I think we did, I don't think we went straight home. I think we went right to get a shark attack. Get grenades. Get a damn grenade. I'm pretty sure we, we did that next. Wait, you're kind of right. Truly beyond repair. Anthony keeps taking work calls. And at this time, so it was this 2019. What are you doing fashion wise? You're actually, did you only wear my clothes? The Nirvana shirt, the blue Hawaiian shirt, the Forever 21 90s print shirt. I think you only wore my clothes. I think I only wore your clothes. My so, chubbies? No, those were my chubbies. I, oh, the other chubbies were <laughs> yours. Yeah. <laughs> the only thing that I wore basically of mine were my shoes because we have different size feet. Yeah. But there was a large time that Joe would just give away his clothes and there would be bags at his house. And for me, I'm like, obviously, I'm going to take your clothes, right. Joe. It was really crazy. Like, you didn't have, you didn't send a chance in developing a personal style. It was like, no. whatever I was wearing, you would then wear. Because but I, then you'd be like, I don't know, this is a little too much for me. Yes. <laughs> no, I definitely had choice. Like, I definitely was like drawing the line at some things but if you think about it i've always been a little bit cost conscious no and sustainable and sustainable you I'm, made me sustainable those pants you can't get enough of them because i bought them myself yeah so you're gonna wear them until they fall off your body absolutely until they split down the seam they split down the seam because i'm a pants splitter at my core so you're deep in like i'm something that's always vacation been true for me wear. is vacation wear i love a button down i love a fun printed button down with a little, little short and a little, little shoe. And probably, I mean, this is the time that I was wearing fanny packs. What was that about? That fanny pack is on you and it's cinching your waist and making your hips look like <laughs> Mrs. Incredible in some of those pictures. Like, what was the fanny pack about? Why? Like, who did I see that was wearing a fanny and pack? And you were like, I want to be just like that. And I want to be just like that. You were kind of in festival wear the whole weekend. I think it's because since I was working for a travel company at the time, fanny packs were in. But yeah. I was like, I can make it cute and I can make it chic. And I guess it was both of those things. And there's nothing better than a Herschel fanny pack it to was do the Herschel. trick. It was Herschel. It was Herschel. Herschel had a moment. Yeah, you were really rocking like straight boy at... Coachella and I feel like you were rocking like I don't, I don't even, even know. know I don't even know was it like was it like ASOS ASOS gay I was wearing like guest shirts that I was like cropping myself and like mm. I was cropping a lot of shirts yeah I was my favorite people call me dad shirt that was gay it was very gay I was dressing very gay on this trip I was rem I remember specifically when you threw that shirt on I was like oh. whoa he's going there yeah I literally was like oh we he's he's taking the plunge deep I really I really like Sometimes don't even realize that I'm taking the leap until years later I look back and I'm like, wow, good for me. And we were both cock out. I don't know <laughs> what it is about me, but like, again, I wanted the smallest little shorts. It wasn't even, I don't think it was the size, Andrew. No, it's Joe, that I we was pulling them, them up. up. So literally, like, yeah. the bulge was, and it wasn't like a hot bulge. It was like no. balls to one side, dick, dick to, to the, the other. other. It looked like a little camel, camel toe. toe. A boost knuckle. Like, That's what it and was. And it was already a five-inch seam chubby short. Yeah, so, so once you pull it, once you pull your short up 
into the crack of your taint, that's when you know it's not going to be a good sign. Because I also wasn't just pulling up to cover bottom stomach. I was pulling up to belly button. New Orleans grenades. What's in a grenade? I actually... Was sure. the grenades the one that were in the yeah. long... It was like Mountain Dew. It was like a Mountain Dew. Yeah. I suck those babies back. In that weird ass fucking bar, we were, again, blacking out by 2.30 p.m. Yes. Anthony's like, I'm on like a horse. And Andrew goes, I'm on like a Yorkie. You can't send that to people. I won't. Before we checked into our hotel. Before we checked into the hotel, I probably had a few grenades and then... Boiled peanuts. Oh. I couldn't even believe my eyes with those damn boiled peanuts because it was giving the planter peanut because you had to crack your own. I haven't seen someone have to crack their shell in a bit. They're in the shell. I didn't think they were. I didn't think, I didn't think they were in the shell either. We still getting got two it. bags of it. Not at a five guys, not at a Texas Roadhouse. But those were big shells. Those were thick shells. Five guys, small, sh not, no longer. I don't think that you can crack your nuts. What do you out mean? of Five Guys. There's no more nuts. Are there nuts? I haven't been to a Five Guys in. I'm doing this because I'm not drinking that. I'm getting Five Guys today. I'm ordering a breeds. <laughs> Growing up gay, and even almost up until recently, I had a lot of walls up around my family. Like there was like thing, like there was two lives. There was like my gay life and then like my life at home. Despite the fact that my family knew I was gay, like I was like, there are just things that I'm not gonna do, talk about, or like wear in front of my family just because it's like not for them, it's for my gay life. Yeah. And this was kind of like a glimpse into the future of what we could do if we were willing to just commit to the bit. And it was in that way, I think a very inspiring trip. Like I remember just being like, I'm able to say fuck and talk about cock. Yeah. I don't know why I use cock. I've never used the word cock sexually in my life You've but it's been so funny to say up cock since episode one i've been saying cock since yeah, the pilot sure. basically you've been saying shrek cock shrek cock since like early days we haven't talked about dick balls or holes in so long on this podcast and but the thing is we started strong it was raunchy it. it was raunchy at the beginning it was a raunchy pod and you didn't like that you did no, not it's like for that. Families. It's still not for families. It's still not a family podcast. I think it's veering that way, but sometimes I think that we could have a little PG 13 R rated episode. They say penis and vagina in Barbie. I can't say cock and balls in Good Children. You're right. You're you know right. what I mean? You're so right, Joe. That when you put it in that context, it's completely different. It's completely different. Yeah. I will say that there was a drama element to the shark attack that I did like. Oh, a shark I liked attack. Attention in the moment. So it was you like. You ordered the shark attack? When you're like, when you hear. <laughs> body numb. Like. Phone Did you out. order a shark attack? Of course I ordered a shark attack at the bar. Okay. Of course I did. It came with a shark. It came with a shark. It did. But anyways, I'm blackout drunk. We're walking through New Orleans. And... Moose knuckling our way. Moose knuckling our way. Shimmy shammying. I will say that once we got to the hotel... Thank God we got to check into the hotel because it was... look. I, I felt in the moment that I was... Gonna fall asleep. Fall asleep. Yeah. But... With New Orleans and with drinking in general, I feel like we frequented that hotel about seven times a day. The best way to vacation, and like this is a pro tip, if you were going to write down a few things about how to do New Orleans, one, go to Sucre. Two, don't be afraid to go to sleep 15 times a day. Mm -hmm. Like actually in between everything we did, we took a nap, which was perfect. Perfect, because it's June in New Orleans take and you're drinking take a nap take a nap and we were taking naps and then we were taking pics because when you're drinking that much and you're on a trip where it's pride weekend you're gonna want to take nudes you're gonna be a little bit horned up we're actually sick this is a recurring theme in our lives up until this moment the cruise the cruise was I the think icing on the cake. Me. We were crying about it recently. <laughs> yeah. Like actually it's like boudoir shoots happen when me and Andrew are drunk and on vacation. Like we get to work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well this one this 
this photo shoot definitely will go down in history as the photo shoot before that the ended storm. with a bang. Yeah. Well, no, the first shoot was fine. It was. I mean, I was still fully naked laying on the bed, but the pictures, first of all, are amazing. Pictures were great because we had bags of Cafe Du Monde Bengays. The what? Did I say Bengay? <laughs> the Bengays. Bengays. Just a Zeppeli. Is that how you're going to describe them? You're happy to call them just a Zeppeli? You think they're doing the same thing as a Zeppeli? Well, they're doing the same thing for me that a Zeppeli does, but Which I will what? say that they're different orgasmic feelings. Right, okay. But a beignet, as opposed to a Zeppeli, is more uniform in shape. It's more rectangular, and I honestly think a little bit softer. Oh, I would agree with you. Yes. And almost like sweeter. There's definitely a sweetness. sweetness. Yeah. I feel like we must have had about 700 of those. Like the way that our bodies went through hell on that trip, it's a miracle we're still here. I agree. And then we took our straight counterparts to, I think, their first gay bar. I want to say maybe our second gay bar of our lives. Right? Was it your first gay bar? I think it was my first gay bar. I remember it being almost could have been really nervous. Isn't that crazy? I was so nervous because I was like, oh my God, like I'm about to be surrounded by all of these gay men. I'm in a button down with a bucket hat and a <laughs> candy pack. I think it may have been. No, I had gone to like China Chalet and shit at that point, but hadn't like really been to a real gay bar especially yeah. not in new york i no. felt like i can handle new york in some ways but it was so it was all of our first time at a gay bar which is crazy 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 and there's something about bringing straight men to a gay space that they become so entranced and fixated on the gayness of it all well i think that's like Part of the problem with the world is like we are so intensely separate and we like and for good reason, like you shouldn't yeah. bring straight men to gay spaces. But like if they're willing to go in with an open mind and like have a good time, like think about how the like the questions they must have that they feel like they can't ask is then they'll be seen as gay. Like the patriarchy is so oppressive to everyone where it's like for so for the non-violent, non-homophobic gay men who just like probably are just like, this is not my space, but I'm curious. Like, we we opened an invite to be like, you don't have to feel weird being in this space. Yep. If you feel weird, we don't have to be here. Yes. But if you want to be here, like we can have this is a good time for everyone. And it was. And they didn't feel weird being there. I think they actually anything, felt more comfortable than us. The seal. Your your dick pic was shown around. Do you remember that? What the hell? What the hell? <laughs> what the hell? Right? Didn't you? Yes, show? Joe. Yes, Joe. I'm just remembering that now that I showed you everybody showed, there. You my showed my brother-in-law and my cousin your dick. I actually can't. That's an invasion of privacy that I allowed people into. But then also... It was not even that. It was like also they were scrolling on Grinder and Scruff for us. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they were like, you should absolutely hook up with this man. And you were like, yeah, I'll do it. I was like, yeah, absolutely. I'll go over. Did that happen? No, absolutely not. What else stands out for you? I mean, I think that it was also the first time that I ever drank absinthe. I love We were absinthe. on a ghost tour. We were on a ghost tour and you were playing Tempo by Lizzo in the haunted bars. Did we do an absinthe tour yes. or was I we just did a, sipping No, absinthe? we did an absinthe tour. We went to about six places. That was a crazy evening. I actually don't remember a single thing no, that happened. No, because Joe, the thing about absinthe is like I was genuinely hearing things. I love absinthe. Like I actually like can't recommend it enough yeah. under the right circumstances. Like there's an absinthe bar in Williamsburg that I went to recently and it was amazing. You had absinthe? Yeah. You loved... I would go back in a heartbeat. I mean, I want to go. But before absinthe was the incident that you've been dying to tell on this podcast. Hmm. Do you want to just tell the whole story? I think I'll tell the story. So we're back in the hotel room. We're blackout drunk. We're like definitely a little bit sleepy. I'm trying to nap. Joe's deciding that he wants to take more 
pictures. I don't even was think this I was taking pictures. I think I was just ass naked on the carpet, like laying face down. Was this was this dip time? No, dip was the next day. This was the second day of the okay, trip. Okay, this is the second day of the trip. Joe's like definitely horny, so he's like pants off. It was also laying like on the floor. Heat and drunk. I was like, I can't have clothes on right now. Yeah, you can't have clothes on. I'm fully clothed still. <laughs> Doesn't matter what the temperature is. I'll always have clothes on. I'm laying on the bed. <laughs> I'm laying on the bed, like trying to like nap a little bit. Should I tell the real story or should I tell an altered version of the story? Anyways, Joe decides to maybe, you know, go into the bathroom and invite somebody in the bathroom that is not me. And (laughs) is like showering at first and then all of a sudden, like, I'm like, wait, are they hooking up in there? A knock comes on the door. Anthony comes into the room. (laughs) At this point... are you ironing? At this point, yeah, I I forgot that part. At this point, Joe's hooking up in the bathroom. I'm ironing a shirt. Anthony goes, where's Joe? I go, uh, he's in the bathroom. He's like, what is he doing in the bathroom? I'm like, I have no idea. I continue ironing my shirt. Anthony leaves the room. Joe walks out of the bathroom with with the guest. <laughs> and <laughs> and we all just pretend like nothing, nothing just happened, happened in that bathroom and went on with a... the absent tour. Hey. And I was like, hey. hey. And then was, we went to the absent tour and it was great. And we went to the absent tour and it was it was definitely great. But it was definitely a like running joke for the rest of the trip was like Yeah, because everyone knew what had happened. Everyone knew what happened in that bathroom. And like <laughs> we for a while said like what happened in New Orleans stays, stays in, in New, New Orleans, Orleans. But it's now it's now come to the podcast. It's now come to the podcast. And we figured it would at this point. We figured. But you know what? The beignets. The beignets made up for it. The beignets, the shark attacks, the grenades, the absinthe, the, the absinthe sucre, and everything in between really made it one of my favorite trips. And then we did end up, what? I was going to say one thing that I would skip if you're going to New Orleans. I'm sorry. Court of Two Sisters. The Court of Two Sisters. Or three Sisters? Or the Court of Two three, Sisters. Court of Two. Yeah, there's no need. There's no need. Jazz band, phenomenal. Uh, sure. The buffet itself could do without that Could price. do absolutely without. Yeah. Go Remember to they Sucre out? They wouldn't let me go in because I was wearing a tank top. That was insane. I feel like we didn't even tell that story well at all. Neither. Oh, well. Wow. So that story ended faster than I think we anticipated. I agree. Shall we um, answer a few questions? I think we should. Good children to the guidance office. Why is it always slutty? Because there's something about a guidance counselor that's a little bit slutty. Do you, Mr. 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 Could me. You know what I mean? Like he could. We're talking about our middle school guidance counselor. Oh, jeez. Anon, please, how to get your high school friends to talk about things besides high school. People are still living in the past like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you may have asked the wrong person because... <laughs> no, I don't think that I would be with my high school friends and just talk about high school. It depends on the high school friend I'm with. I think that we would always touch on it, but I don't think that it would be the constant conversation yeah. that was happening. Right. I mean, you can be in charge of pivoting the conversation. You know what I mean? Like, if they're having the conversation about high school, then you can be like, yeah, blah, blah, blah. And then pivot the conversation and be like, listen, this week I was doing blah, 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 blah. And yeah. then see where the conversation But goes. sometimes I've been in those situations and sometimes it's it tough. It does. They bring it right back. And that's like – um. You have to wonder if those are friends that you're supposed to have forever or maybe they're just friends you're supposed to see when you want to actually reminisce. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because if you're still talking about high school right now, 
do they really know who you are? No, that's the or thing. Or do they know who you were? And did you all maybe change? And now the only thing you have in common is high school. Mm. Um, Lauren's asking favorite Lana Del Rey work. Thank you, Lauren. Um, it's always going to be chemtrails over the country club. Chemtrails. Joe. You just got this podcast canceled. I mean, you guys, I'm being sh- I like I know I'm gonna sound crazy, but I'm being shadow banned on TikTok because I used the word chemtrails in a TikTok. I've always been pretty good with my TikTok views. Pretty like very fortunate that like my engagement's always been pretty high. I said I put one post saying they put the the government put the pumpkin spice in the chemtrails early this year. Two views. Ever since then, nothing is breaking like 20k and like it used to break 200k yeah. every other every other tiktok i am being censored i'm queuing on i'm being censored by tiktok because it's, it's, it's like funny channels. how it works like that it's a shame they said shut the hell up andrew what advice would you give to someone feeling lost in their 20s first off know that you're not alone there's other people out there that are feeling a little bit lost as well Almost everyone. I think it's a good time to reflect on why you're feeling lost. Is there anything that can change in your life? How are you feeling about your current occupation? How are you feeling about the friends that you have in your life? It's never too late to change things that are currently happening. If you feel lost, take it from me. I felt a little bit lost in my early 20s. You're feeling found? I don't know if... I feel like I'm finding that's beautiful. So like it's a transition right now. Yeah. But I will be found soon. Don't do it. <laughs> Don't sing it. I'm like, <laughs> even when you love with how does it go? When you're broken even, even, even when, when, when the dark comes shining through. No. <laughs> even when the this is going to be such when a fun a one to edit. When you friend to carry you, when you're broken on the ground, you will be found. So let the sun come. I used to listen to that song a lot. So you know what? Maybe listen to it. Listen to You Will Be Found from the Euro And let yourself soundtrack. cry. And then when you feel like you know what's next for you, listen to your heart when it's calling for you. Um, what's been pissing you off lately? Pissing me off lately? Yeah. I don't think I've really been pissed off lately. I think like... Hmm. What about you, Joe? I oh, know you're you didn't answer? <laughs> okay. Um, I don't know. I don't... Okay, this is something that's a little bit controversial. And I made a TikTok about it, but I didn't post it. Because I was like, I don't need to be mean right now. And if anyone takes offense to this, I absolve myself of the guilt. I've seen a lot of TikToks about the Barbie movie that are, like, from gay men being, like, "Mm, like, I watched the Barbie movie and it's, like, so sad because I grew up never fitting into, like, either of the categories. Like, I'm just, like, not a Ken and I also, like, never got to really feel like Barbie because I was, like, gay. So I feel like I was excluded from both sides of the group. Like, I'm such an owl and, like, it made me really feel sad and weird. Like, thank God for girls. Like, whatever. And I just want to say that, like, the fact that, like, cis gay men are, like, making a narrative about how the Barbie movie didn't reflect their experience is insane. Like, it is literally the same exact thing as a straight cis man complaining about the Barbie movie not reflecting their narrative. However, Mm. they're finding a way to use, like, therapy talk and use, like, being gay to, like, mask the feeling of discomfort when something is not about you like that's what's happening like and it's just like so apparent to me like i feel like a lot of cis gay men use their queerness to feel personally like persecuted against and yeah obviously there's crazy attacks against the lgbt community in this country but there is just like this like narrative happening on tiktok specifically from cis white gay men about how the Barbie movie made them sad because they couldn't relate to Barbie or Ken. And I'm like, well, maybe it's because you just weren't the fucking main character for once because men were taking a backseat. You know what I mean? I know what you mean. I'm like, wait, Joe, you didn't see my video that I posted. (laughs) I'm like, actually sick. Um, No, I completely agree with you. That's what's been pissing me off. Wow, Joe, that was really like filled with passion. It's been like, because I've been thinking about it. It just feels like... We're, like gay men are forgetting that they are men who benefit from the privilege of being a man in this country in this world no matter what mm-hmm. do you know what I mean 
Like, no matter what, you disproportionately benefited, even if you were gay. Yes. When you're broken on On the the ground, ground, you will be found. (laughs) Do I reach out to my ex-best friend? She just got married, and I want to congratulate her. Yeah. I agree. If you want to reach out, reach out. I don't think that, I mean, again, even if it ended poorly or whatever, like, that was still your friend at one point in life, and that is a big milestone for some people, and, like, if they don't respond, they don't respond. If they do, it might make their day. I love my one of my favorite things is to reach out to an ex friend. I yeah. love doing it. I'll do it to every ex friend I've ever had. Like it's one of my favorite things to do. Just do it. Just do it. It absolves a lot sometimes. Yeah. Like, um, what's a hobby of each of yours that we don't know about? There's nothing that we don't talk about in this podcast. Ooh, I'm trying to think about like what's one of my hobbies. Everything I do, I try to monetize. So <laughs> I like, hate it's to say it. Like, there's insane. nothing that like you're missing. I think I'm making clay. I'm having clay dates with my friend Michelle. That's kind of one of your recent hobbies. Yeah, for I mean sure. it's like one a one time thing, but I think the clay is something I'm getting into. Yeah. Nothing. Smoking weed. Do you know slash like boy genius? I'm seeing Boy Genius in October. I know Boy Genius, but I don't really know Boy Genius the way that Joe knows Boy Genius. I'm a Phoebe head through and through. I love yeah. Lucy and Julian. I think that Phoebe is like the reason I'm attached, but I do really enjoy Boy Genius. It really is. I'm a farb. It is interesting in that way that like they are a group, but like Phoebe is probably bringing in a lot of the listeners. Yeah. But they're all great in their own. Oh yeah, world. I think that the group is exceeding almost Phoebe. Like I feel like now. Do you think? How do you think that they feel? Like that's great. I think they're feeling good. Yeah. Advice for dealing with a fuck boy that you really like but won't commit to you: drop it, leave it alone, give up, move on. You don't need it. You're if you if they won't commit to you, they don't like you. They don't yeah. like you. And especially if they're a fuck boy, like you're just fucking like. There's sometimes no emotion that goes into just fucking, right? It's like you might feel the emotional side of it, but they're just hooking up with you or finding what is benefiting them in that moment. And that sometimes can be really hurtful. And And if they won't commit to you, don't get out. Like, cut it out. Like, it's not worth your time. You're stunning. I'm looking at your profile picture. You're gorgeous. Find someone else. She's gorgeous. She's gorgeous. She's gorgeous. What TV show best represents Long Island high schools because nobody has done them well? Good Children. Good Children, the TV show. Coming to Coming you. soon. Coming soon. How to survive living with parents post-grad? We've had a few encounters living with parents. Listen, I think it's just like opening up and, and, and being more yourself and being comfortable with them because when you can see them as not your parents and just like a friend or like I don't know. You can, like, shed that layer and, and release that wall. I would say set boundaries. Yeah. Be like, this is... I've, I'm living here. Thank you. I need to have my own time and my own space and, like, mm-hmm. do things my way. Set boundaries, but then... Yeah. Set boundaries and be comfortable. But, like, the only reason that you're gonna, like, have things pent up is because you feel like you can't talk about those things. But, like, if you feel like comfortable, bring it up. What's your advice for us short kings? I can't believe, like, I, I mean, like, I am, like, I guess, like, 5'8". Advice? Keep your chin up. Keep your chin up. Keep your shoulders back and your chest proud. No. Like, listen, if you're gay and you're a short king, I do believe it's a different story. If you're tall and you're a short king, maybe it is actually the same story. <laughs> I shouldn't say it's a different story for them. I I'm so I like it's fun to like be the listener in that moment and like we know what he just said but he doesn't and it's amazing. <laughs> he said if you're gay and you're a short king, it's a different story. But if you're tall and you're a short king, it's, it's a, a different, different story. story. Tall? <laughs> I said tall. Yeah. Oh, I meant if you're short, straight. straight. If you're straight, you're a short king. I'm drunk as hell. No, I think that, like, if you're a short king, advice here is, like, 
take the narrative out of your head that being short is a problem. Yeah. Like, it's literally not a problem. Like, it has no bearing on who you are. It, like, if you're dating someone taller than you, and again, I think in the gay space, it's different, but in like, in a better way, or like, in a better way. Yeah. Because again, like, if you want to find a taller man, you can. If you want to find a shorter man, you can. You can find somebody your same height. It doesn't matter. But I feel like the stigma when it comes to being short as a man tends to be for like harder in a heterosexual relationship oh, sure. because it's like, oh, if that girl's taller than me, she's not going to want to talk to me right. because I'm short. Well, this is I don't think it's a straight man who's asking us this question. I agree, but if you're short and you're and you're gay, I'm going to tell you something. You're completely fine. Yeah, and I if mean, my are boyfriend's pe- five six and I'm six three. Yeah. And I never like once thought twice. No, I think there are people who do think twice, and yeah. those are people you should avoid. Like every time someone is not interested in you, that's their fucking problem. Yeah, it's something that like they need to look inward and yeah. And what are they valuing? Realize. Yeah, what do you value? Your height standards. I was there. I was there on the podcast itself. You now said, I don't care. You said I like a tall man. I like a tall man. Now I genuinely do not care, because like. Why was I writing off so many people based off their height? Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. Have you ever felt judged or embarrassed to wear what you want? Slash, how did you come overcome that? Let's have you take this one away. Um, Absolutely. Every single time I get off the train in Massapequa to record this podcast and I'm in some insane fucking outfit that seems normal in Bushwick, I have a moment where I'm standing at the Dunkin' Donuts and I'm like... This is weird. I feel weird. If you want to dress how you want to dress, you're going to have to commit to the fact that you're going to look like that your entire life. If you want to have a personal style, if you want to be unique, you have to accept that being unique means being different and like being seen as different. Like the more and more that I've leaned into the fact that I don't really give a fuck what a stranger is thinking about what I'm wearing and I know it looks good, like the more of an icon that makes you. Do you know Mm, what I mean? Like the more that you're accepting like this is fucking it, the people who get it will get it. People who don't will not. All the people who you look up to who like have like a style or a point of view that's different, like they don't give a fuck. Like that's the whole fucking secret. I think it's Every guest we've had on the podcast, even ones who haven't premiered yet, everyone has said the same thing. It's like, if you're not just going to do it, if you're not going to lean into it, like Teffy said it, Julia said it, upcoming guests have said it. Like if you don't just do what you want to do, why are you doing anything at all? And I think that we think that like, we live in this world, especially in this like virtual world when it comes to influencers or whatever, that just because people have a social following justifies what they can wear or who they are publicly or whatever. But like, even if you don't like take their following away from them, they're showing up in those outfits. You're not going to get the following without doing it. You're You're not not going to get get the following. That's the whole thing. And if, and if you don't want it, sure. But like, if you do great, but like, Wear the outfits that you want to wear, even if you think that, the, or people might think that they're crazy. I want to be invited to a fashion show. I want to be gifted the webe. Well, listen, if you're listening, New York Fashion Week is coming up. Is it? In September. In September. You're right. So, and like, look at me. I'm a fashion icon. You're a fashionista. Yeah. Um, What a weird episode. What a crazy episode. Sometimes they're hits, sometimes they're different. And I don't ever think that they're a miss. It just hits different this time. And just like that. Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of Good Children. We'll see you next week with a brand new episode. Mm -hmm. Don't forget to do your homework. Like, comment, subscribe, rate, review. Write a nice little something. If you haven't reviewed an Apple podcast yet, it's time. It's time. It's really time. Like, I I know, like, again, we have a good amount of reviews, which we're very thankful for. And the past couple of reviews have been great, besides about two of them, Um, which is fine. We're not for everybody. And I'm learning that when when it comes to feedback. Yes. I'm learning that. Um, But spread the word. Tell your friends. You know where to find us across all social media platforms at Good Children Pod. I'm on Instagram at Andrew Muscarella, on TikTok at Andrew underscore Musky. 10.1K. 10.1K. I saw it. I yeah. saw it. I'm basically an influencer, you guys. You joined the creator program. I did. I just got at the creator marketplace. I'm on Instagram at Joe Hedges and on TikTok at Be Quiet Joe. Help me get out of TikTok jail. Go into my content and comment and share. 
You don't even have to actually, you can comment hate if you want. And actually, hate. that's fine. You can say I fucking hate you and I hate your pants. Go ahead. I just need the engagement. And until next time. Until next time. You don't get no bread with, with one. one. You don't get no bread with one. A meatball. Oh, I missed that moment.